I'm Ranger Murray and I'm here at Sagamore Hill. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the carriage path you see behind me. When Theodore Roosevelt was president and used Sagamore Hill as his summer White House from 1901 to 1908, modes of transportation were still fairly limited. So what were you to do if you received an invitation to visit Sagamore Hill? You had a few options available. You could simply walk up the steep wooded dirt path that led to Sagamore Hill. You could ride your horse to the top or use a horse-drawn carriage. But before you could do any of those, you'd first have to get past the Secret Service agents. Starting in 1894, Grover Cleveland was the first president to be protected by the Secret Service, but only part-time. This continued with President McKinley until his assassination in 1901. Since McKinley's assassination marked the third to occur in a 37-year period, Congress was forced to act by expanding the responsibilities of the Secret Service. This is why Theodore Roosevelt was the first president to have a full-time Secret Service detail. Since Roosevelt worked between Washington, D.C. and Oyster Bay, New York, he had agents travel with him to both locations. Roosevelt had originally disliked the protection of the Secret Service agents, calling them a very small but necessary thorn in the flesh. He made a point to lose them, especially while on horse rides. In Oyster Bay, he would lose his guards by leading them to Cooper's Bluff, where he could easily drop out of sight and they were left falling down the cliff. Yet, the Roosevelts established personal relationships with some of the agents. William Craig was one of the original men guarding Roosevelt. He was especially close with Theodore's son Archie and had taught many of the Roosevelt children how to swim. Craig was the first Secret Service agent to be killed in the line of duty after being involved in a carriage accident with Roosevelt in Massachusetts in 1902. The agents had quite the workload, especially while in Oyster Bay. There were typically five agents placed at either the checkpoint or guarding the property. Additional guards were stationed in downtown Oyster Bay for rotation and backup. In fact, Sagamore Hill was so guarded that the Washington Post wrote, even rough riders find the approach to the summer cottage more difficult than the ascent of San Juan Hill. Secret Service agents had prevented many intruders from gaining access to the president. Some individuals were well known, such as the woman in blue, who tried five times to meet with the president. One local man, Henry Wilbrunner, came to Sagamore Hill with unknown intentions but armed. He was tackled by the Secret Service and sent to jail. Though his advisors were rattled, Roosevelt blew off the incident and complimented the Secret Service by writing, There was nothing whatever in that crazy man incident. He was a poor, demented creature with a revolver. There was no danger of him getting past the Secret Service men. Later, when in court, Will Brenner confesses he was there to ask Roosevelt for his daughter Alice's hand in marriage, though he did not know her personally. Even so, not all intruders were human. On August 12, 1907, according to the New York Times, Secret Service agents were awoken to the sound of noises. The paper wrote, when the guard returned to his post after a vain search for the cause of the noise, he got another start by hearing scratching on the roof of a lean-to at the rear of the president's home. Up on the roof went the guardsman, and he could scarcely believe his eyes when he saw the bear. Luckily for the guards and Roosevelt's, the bear scurried off, and though unclaimed, did not return to the property again. Next time you're at Sagamore Hill, pretend you're a Secret Service agent. Would you have enjoyed it?